Hi, Raymond. Hey, okay, I'm back now, Warren. I'm ready to go. So what would you like to start with? Okay, first, can everyone hear Raymond? Can people hear Raymond? So, yeah, I can hear him fine. Loud and clear? Loud and clear, yeah. Okay, so Raymond, what I what I thought I would ask you to do tonight or to, in the morning where you are is last time we spoke mainly about clearing cities, but I'd love just to get you to share a bit about self-empowerment for people and some of the dowsing things that you taught myself and and others on how to douse yourself about how you can douse prosperity like um abuse um trauma and even how you've got your brain center your heart your mind just about self-empowerment food allergy so really a self-empowerment um thing and possibly even reading people or just helping um with clearing stuff once once you've spoken Okay, um, I'll be glad to do that, and I will do my best to speak plainly, and if I, if I don't uh, explain this well enough, or if folks have a question that they can type in to you there, and then you ask it, I will I'll answer as best I can. Um, a lot of people in my classes are really interested and the self-empowerment, mostly because no one else has ever taught them and they never learned on their own. And I just finished a class uh, this weekend, which went over quite well, um, and so folks are really interested in this. So uh, I don't have a particular set of rules outlined, so we'll just kind of go with whatever uh, comes to my mind. But the first thing I or one of the things I tell people is there's only one person on this planet that you have to live with, and that's you. So um, everyone else is a matter of choice. Uh, there are ways that we can change the way we speak and the way we think that changes who we are. Uh, I sum it up like this. Think of the characteristics or qualities that you would like to have. Uh, and another way of saying it, think of the kind of person that you would really like to be. Imagine yourself as being that person. Speak as if you were that person. Act as if you were that person. And you become that person. It's simply a way to design your own life the way you want it. And energy follows thought. Those three words are among the most important words that I can ever share with anybody. Uh, Einstein is given credit to have said that. If he didn't say it, he should have. Uh, and I use those uh those words quite quite often. So when I, I've never known a person to get well by complaining about their illnesses. I have never known a person to become wealthy by complaining about their poverty. Uh, why? Because they are putting their thoughts, their words, their energy into what they don't want not realizing that they are contributing to their own problems. So um, the first rule of success is think of what you want, not what you don't want. And what the reason for that is simply energy follows thought. So it takes some self-discipline uh, to be able to guide your thoughts into what you want rather than what you don't want. Now, if anybody has any specific questions on this, I'll do my best to help them out. Uh, also, start practicing doing things. And I wouldn't suggest that people do everything that I do or have done. Or we're all different. Uh, human equality does not exist, and it never has. 
It's simply a lie that we have been told. Uh, in my last newsletter uh, uh, last month, I concluded it with this. I have heard for years that it takes all kind of people to make the world. I don't believe this. But I want to ask you a question. If you believe this, how many thieves, robbers, burglars, child molesters, rapists, do you really need to have a well-balanced community? I didn't have anybody to respond to that question on my newsletter. So I don't believe a lot of things that is supposed to be common knowledge. It's simply repeated and people accept it. Well, I question most everything I've ever heard and disbelieve a great deal of it. So uh, the way to empowerment is start, is start thinking for yourself and stop letting other people think for you. Now, will it create some inconveniences for you? Yes, probably so. Why? Because you won't fit in. And it's just the price you pay for freedom and independence. But it's well worth the price. At least it is to me. Now, some folks can't do that. Why? Because they're weak. And I don't know that I can help these people. I can offer them the information, but they probably won't use it. I find that in class. See, when I, I've been teaching class for quite a while, since 25 years or longer. And I've had a few thousand people come to my class. I have two people that have done miracles beyond anything else that I said anyone else has done. I have Larry Jeff Jones, who I had him in my class this weekend. He volunteers to come up and talk to the folks, and everybody's glad to see him, and he enjoys it. Jeff has lived for 25 years, I believe, now 24, 25 years without food. Well, nobody else ever came to the place did that. Uh, my friend Benny Big uh, rescued a little boy that had been drowned. He'd been dead for 30, about 30 minutes, no, 45 minutes. And he found his soul, brought it back, but it's about the next day the kid was fine. Nobody else had done that. All right, but a lot of people will, will really do a lot of good. They will help themselves. That was the plan. They will help their families, maybe uh, help their friends, basically improve their life. And there will be some people, or very few, but there will be some that actually wonder what the class was about. So how could I possibly believe that humans are equal? They take the Everybody gets the same information. Some do miracles, some do nothing. So stop believing what you've been told all of your life just because a lot of people say it. The fact that the majority of people believe something still doesn't make it true. So learn to think for yourself. And start out being, let's, let's say start out mild. Actually, I wrote a, a newsletter on this. It should be out within the next few days. If you haven't signed up for it, Go to my website, RaymondGraceFoundation.org. Sign up for the newsletter. It's free. One of uh, I had a bit in in there about self empowerment, and the first thing I suggested was that whenever I get a phone call and do not recognize the number, I do not say hello. I pick up the receiver and say, "Are you sure you have the right number?" Many times it's a telemarketer. I don't know if you have those in Australia, but we sure got more than our fair share here in America. And somebody, usually with a recorded voice, trying to sell you something or get you to do something. And a lot of times it's a scam because uh, they're trying to get your personal information. And uh, I answer uh, sometimes, and someone will say, is this Raymond Grace? And I will say, that depends on who wants to know. What am I doing? I'm letting the person on the other end of the line know that I'm the one in charge, not them. And I'm, I'm very blunt about it. Why? Because it saves me a lot of problems. Uh, matter of fact, if anyone calls and asks me a question without 
proper introduction to themselves. Uh, I will say, why do you want to know? I will never answer a question for anyone that calls me that does not properly identify themselves. That's one of the first simple steps to take towards empowerment. Don't do something just because an unknown person tells you to do it. Uh, another thing that I do that you folks can't do in Australia, uh, and you might find some milder alternative for it. And I got to thinking one day, wonder what the folks at the bank would do if I went in wearing a gun. Well, there's only one way to find out. Buck on one and a quick draw hope and walk in. Uh, they kind of noticed it first time. It's been, that's been several years ago. Now nobody pays any attention to it. What a way of saying this is you can literally train people how to treat you. And whenever you make up your mind what you will tolerate and what you will not, you literally send a message to the world. I'm confident of that. Why? Because I've been doing it for years. I do not get calls in the middle of the night, like a lot of uh, folks in my profession do. Why? Because I don't tolerate it. If someone calls me after bedtime at night, I will get up early the next morning, call them back and wake them up. I did that one morning, someone, uh, and they said, do you realize it's 4 a.m.? I said, yeah, that's what I called you. And they hang a phone up. I get me a cup of coffee, give them time to go back to sleep and call them again. Let's solve my problem. Is it diplomatic? No, of course not. It solves the problem. I just might not know the formula for success all the time. I know a few things about success. I might, I probably don't know everything. I do know the formula for failure is trying to please everybody. It can't be done. So uh, I go back to my opening statement. There's only one person on this planet you really have to live with, and that's you. And if you're doing things that other people tell you to do, you're really not living your own life. You're living someone else's. So another thing is change the way you talk. Uh, so many people, and I used to do this because we... We kind of form habits of the people that uh, we are around and those that we have conversations with. And uh, the culture in which we live uh, forms habits for us. So it's what I call monkey see, monkey do. We kind of follow what we've, uh, what we've seen other people do. And there's a saying that I've used too many times of I have to do something today. Um, it may be I have to go to the town, I have to go to the post office, I have to do something. I have changed that uh, philosophy. And now I say I choose to do it. Uh, it makes a lot of difference. Whenever you're saying you have to do something, that is, you know, you got to remember, folks, your body and your brain listen to where your mouth is talking. So I want to talk talk a little more on that. I remember someone telling me one day that they had to attend a certain type of gathering, family gathering. And I said, no, you don't. She said, I really don't want to go. I don't get along with people. Well, then don't go. Oh, I have to. No, you believe you have to. That's the difference between you and me. You believe you have to do something because someone else wants it. And I don't. Now, I do believe in being kind to people. I've made a career out of it. But there's a difference of being kind to people and letting them uh, tell you how to run your life. So um, use this phrase, I choose to do something. So when people ask me why I did a certain thing, I'll say, I have three answers. I'm going to give you all three of them. It needed to be done. I could, and I wanted to. I don't have other answers. Now, whenever you develop a manner of speaking, with confidence, and still be kind to people. You literally weed out the people to get in the way. So, um, I wonder if any comments come in or whatever, you can read them to me. Um, but that would be the first thing I would say. The second thing is get troublesome people out of your life. It doesn't matter who they are. Uh, associate with only 
intelligent and honest people. And if you can't only find, only find one, that's the one to associate with. You can't find any, uh, just uh, be a loner and stay by yourself. It's better than having people drag you down, take your money, and uh, listen. I have to listen to them talk about uh, all the aches and pains and problems and all that. Uh, because we're affected not only by what we say, we're affected by what we hear. And I, I tell people this a, a, a lot of times, or I actually I ask them, if you doubt that you are influenced by the people around you, would you have ever learned to cuss by yourself? Of course, they didn't say that in class and they used to laugh, but it, it's so obvious. Uh, we learn from the people around us. Well, that can be both good and bad. So start choosing the good characteristics that you want to have and weed out the people that are sharing the bad characteristics with you. Uh, and again, I'm going to repeat, when you make up your mind what you will tolerate and what you won't, you can literally send a message out to the world. So you folks are far more powerful than anyone has told you about, I think. So that's why I'm telling you this. If I tested this stuff, yeah, it worked. That's why I'm telling you. Uh, so let's see, Warren, where else can we go from here? Um, so ooh, about uh, prosperity versus poverty, uh, there were certain phrases that people around here use and still do. Uh, one is um, every time I get uh, a few dollars ahead, there's something there to take it away from me. Another is uh, I'm too broke to pay attention. Uh, various phrases like that they are very self-defeating. Uh, so don't use uh, You don't necessarily have to use any uh, phrases at all uh, like that to anyone in conversation with anyone else, but you really need to thank them. And one of the things to do is every day give thanks for what you have or what you want. Every day I give thanks for a strong, healthy body. I give thanks for being able to work. I never complain about working. I'm always thankful to be able to work. Uh, work uh, to incorporate thankfulness and gratitude into my conversations, into my thoughts. As a result, I am what I call older than dirt and tougher than nails. So uh, if we, we make ourselves, uh, and I, I learned this, from the people that didn't know. I learned these things from listening to the people that defeated themselves. They were sick and impoverished. And I, I observed, why are they like this? And I finally concluded, they made themselves this way. By the way they thought, the way they spoke, and the way they acted. And I'm thinking, okay, i got to do better than that. So I freely share what information I have that's worked for me with anybody else that wants to listen. I really honestly like helping people. Um, in a class this weekend, a fella had um, um, a, a noise that appeared in his ear. I, I don't know why it was some kind of a tone. And I simply worked on him for like a whole less than 30 seconds right there in class. I got an email. It had gone away. Uh, I've got an email from some lady uh, yesterday morning that uh, she goes home and the water in her well tasted good for the first time ever. Uh, she brought this question up in class. I said, well, I'll just clear the water supply for everyone in class here. And I've already gotten, I think, a couple of emails on that. Some of the water was probably already clear anyway. didn't really need help. But... Um, I really enjoy being able to do this for people. I do not like to um, harm people. I, want, I like to help them. Unless, of course, they are somebody that is dangerous to uh, society or a threat to your children or whatever. In that case, I don't really have any sympathy at all. So uh, 
Uh, don't know if you need to say anything else on that. Uh, has anybody written in with any questions yet? No, I think people are just listening right now, like really, really listening. They're loving it. So, yeah, they want you to keep. They want you to keep talking, Raymond. They're loving it. Well, okay, kind of give me a little prompt here on uh, where we're going next with it, then, and I'll see what I can do. I think what you're saying about prosperity and. Um, impoverishing and one thing you taught me at the event which which i came to which really helped was the three centers like the brain i mean the heart's more powerful than the brain and the sex center and if the sex center is damaged it can actually okay. damage you yeah okay uh, let's talk on that a few minutes then uh whenever we need to change so you just kind of let me know um let's start out very simple Every atom has a nucleus and continually revolving around this nucleus are positive and negative charges of electricity called protons and electrons. And for years, science has thought that the space between the protons and electrons of the atom was empty space. Some years back, they made a discovery that no, that's not true. There is literally an energy between the protons and electrons in the atom. Well, I did some doubting, and what I found was that that energy had intelligence, which was no surprise, and that intelligence would respond to human thought. So energy definitely responds to thought. But uh, it will not, it will respond to negative thoughts seemingly as much as positive thought. So that puts us in charge of our own life. We, everyone is in life where they put themselves by the choices they made. Some people make bad choices. They married the wrong person. They bought things they couldn't pay for. They put substances in their body that ruined their health. They were simply bad choices. And you are never rewarded by bad choices. It's your own self-punishment for making those choices. So people like to blame someone else for their condition. There's really nobody to blame but yourself. You're the one who made the choices. And you say, oh, but so-and-so uh, uh, told me to do this. Well, you made the choice as to whether to listen or not. And what a father advice. So it all comes down to you are the one to put yourself where you are in life. And if you don't like where you are, you are the only one that's going to change it. But nobody else can change it for you. I can offer you information, examples, stories, and advice, but it's still your choice as to whether you act upon it or not. And if you do nothing, nothing is going to happen. And you'll probably die in the same condition you are now or worse. And there's not anything anybody can do to stop you. So the bottom line is you're the one in charge of your life. Simply because of the choices you have made and the ones you will make in the future. So uh, my old friend Chief Tutree, an old American Indian man, very intelligent man, and he was quite well known. He said it like this, people have given their soul to the priest and the preacher, their money to the banker. Uh, let's see, how would he say that? Uh, giving their money to the banker, their uh, soul to the priest. And I said, and their kids to the school system, and they have lost the power to control their own life. Why? Because people give away their power. Now, a lot of people give their power to religion. Uh, millions of people, probably even billions of people have done that. But still yet, that was a choice they made. Now, the, the sad part is they might not have known that they had a choice. They probably didn't. So they did what someone else told them to do. And it didn't probably work out very well for them. 
So if I had but one thing to tell humanity is, you have choices, take them. Now, let's get back to what we were talking about there, about the, I got kind of sidetracked, about each atom of our body having intelligence. Well, all energy has intelligence. Uh, the trees have intelligence. They know when to bear leaves, know when to shed the leaves in the fall, which is early fall here now, and the leaves will be falling off the trees pretty soon, but in the spring, they'll come back. It does that worldwide for most, except for evergreen trees. They green all the time. But uh, there's intelligence there. Seeds know when to sprout. Birds know when to migrate uh, to warmer climates in the winter. Uh, this is an intelligent in nature, and all nature has intelligence. So uh, our bodies have intelligence. Uh, each part of our body has the intelligence to do the job it was performed to do. Now there are bodies who do not form, uh, do not perform correctly, and I don't really know what the real cause of this is nor do I really know how to correct it. Sometimes we might be able to correct it, sometimes not. But um, your heart knows how to pump blood. Your stomach knows how to digest food, but your ears have no clue how to do either of these jobs because each body part is programmed for its own, uh, for a specific purpose. But every part of a body has its own intelligence. Now, let's go back and kind of connect some dots. Atoms make cells. Cells make tissue. Tissue makes body parts. And all combine form a human body. All right? Any body part that's been mistreated, abused, operated on, insulted, or made fun of will suffer from that for the rest of the person's life unless something is done to change it and nothing is done because people don't know it can be done. Well, I found out that we can change the opinions of body parts. I'm not saying that we can do this every in every case, no, we probably can't, but we can do it in some cases. And I think that I have learned how to test a person's belief system because our belief system is the dominant factor that controls everything that happens to us. Uh, and the reason being is back to those three words that Einstein said, energy follows thought. See, uh, there's a very thin line between our attitude and our belief system. And we have the ability to form our own attitude. And in so doing, we form our belief system, good or bad. And whatever that belief system is, pretty much direct what happens to us. If we think that we have been cursed with bad luck, we're right. If we think things are pretty much going to happen in our favor, we're probably right. Uh, we have so much control over our lives that people are just not aware of. So if you're not aware of the control, you don't take control. So I'm happy you to be aware that you do have control and that you have the ability to do it. And I already given you the formula. Think, speak, and act as though you are the person you want to be and you become that person. So it's really pretty simple. Everything I do is simple. I don't know any big words. Um, so um, I can check. No. See, I, I, just, uh, I think probably could be things added, but uh, I check to see what does the brain, heart, soul, and sexual organs believe. Why do I use those things? Well, that's they seem to be. Uh, uh, the soul, the main part of the body that has intelligence and are, are very important. Uh, without a heart beating, you're going to be dead. Without a brain functioning, you're not going to be able to do anything. Without sexual organ functioning, 
uh, population of the Earth would be extinct uh, within the next uh, 100 years. So these are things that keep people going on the planet. Um, now, that doesn't mean they all work perfectly because they don't. But they all have belief systems. So I check to see what each part of a person believes. And what I found is, uh, is patterns within people. Now, when I say patterns, that doesn't mean it's true all the time. It just means it's true a lot of the time. For example, I find that most females, soul and sex organs, do not believe they deserve prosperity. Oh, I find an exception down there, but that's the general rule. Why? Probably because females have been beaten down and held back since the dawn of time. Uh, I would like to ask a question to a listening audience up there now. To please type in, how many people do we have today? Um, about 65, 70. Okay, that's wonderful. What I would like for you to do, and it's just for females. Females? And it can be a one-word answer. Have you felt more empowerment and confidence since the 1st of June? You either have or you haven't. Okay. If you will, please end to uh, one, just a one word, yes or no. And let's see what happens. We, it'll take a while to do this, Warren, so we'll talk about something else in the meantime. A strong yes from just about uh, every one of them. Say again, please. Nearly all the females except for one, all the females except for one said yes. That doesn't surprise me. How many of them were there? About 50. Okay, so we've got the majority of the audience is female. Okay, that's the majority of my class. It's not unusual to have 28 women and two, three or four men in place. But the, the most even I've ever had it was about a 50-50, I think. Uh, so that, that, that's different. 99% of all my clients are female. The only males I have for clients are business people. They don't contact you with personal problems hardly at all. It's always business problems. Women contact you with personal problems. I mean, this is neither good or bad, it's just what it is. Uh, so, um, I really appreciate you letting us know uh, because um, we did something back in the, uh, back in, actually, to be exact, it was on the 28th of May, on a Friday night. Uh, uh, and you're going to want to know what we did. I'm probably not going to tell you because I don't know if you can handle it very well or not. Um, but we did something to benefit uh, now and in the future females on the planet. Uh, if you ever, if I ever have a, a private conversation, a Skype conversation with you, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, right now, I'm not quite ready to put it out publicly to uh, on anything, especially anything that's being recorded. So uh, I think I'll just probably better uh, back off on that one right now. Uh, so, but you folks that are dowsers, and if you're not dowsers, you can learn how. You can start to ask questions to test your own belief system. You don't really need me to do it for you. And besides that, uh, I can, I'm limited into the number of people that I can work with or even talk to. There's a lot more of you than there are of me. So just as to what degree does your soul believe you deserve uh, prosperity? But actually, let's go back. The first question is this. To what degree does your soul believe you deserve to suffer? You will be amazed at the number of people whose souls believe they deserve to suffer. The next ask the same question of your brain, your heart, and sexual organs. And the vast majority of women, souls, and sexual organs believe they deserve to suffer. 
Wow. Well, they trumped their reason for that because of the abuse upon females in all of recorded history. It creates what I call a female mass consciousness. The fact that you were born in a female body, you inherited certain characteristics. One is you probably have more uh, awareness and psychic ability than males do. Two, you have fear of things that males don't have a fear of. Because you are, the mass consciousness is the combined, I guess, combined consciousness of all the females who have ever lived on Earth. And I just created that phrase, and I called it female mass consciousness. Now, there's also a male mass consciousness. And it is usually will be, uh, oh, maybe confrontation uh, or violence or something like that. Why? Because men are the ones that fought the wars. Uh, so the, actually, human beings have a very poor track record for kindness throughout history. Um, they've spent most of their time trying to kill each other, and not only their time, but their uh, resources. And there's been more money spent on wars trying to kill somebody that could have been used to clean up the earth. Um, it's just, it, I mean, this is not rocket science, folks. This is just logic. Uh, so human beings have not done a real good job with the earth. And we can see that because of the pollution and the water and the air and the cleaning of the forest. And it seems like that human, the human race is hell bent on destroying the world or the earth. And, uh, they don't seem to be smart enough to stop. Uh, so it's just what it is. Uh, will it get better? Well, I hope it will. Do I work on it to get better? Yeah, I do what I can. I don't know sometimes if I'm making a difference or not. I'd like to think I was, but I can't really prove it. But uh, um, every day I work on doing something to make the world better, best I know how. So back to, to what we were talking about. Check to see uh, all of the areas of the body and soul that I mentioned there. And also, if you have a stomach ache, check your stomach. See uh, if it feels like it deserves uh, to suffer. Uh, and what we need to do is to eliminate the belief in our bodies, minds, and soul that we deserve to suffer. And I replace it with a belief that suffering is totally ridiculous. It has never solved a problem for anybody. It doesn't pay anything, so you've never made any money from it. You never will, so there's no reason to suffer. I know there are religious orders that teach that suffering will cause you to go to heaven or be have a better life or whatever. I see no evidence whatever to believe anything like that. This is just somebody's story that they made up to control people. That's all it is. So learn to look past the lies and find out what's really the truth, people. You've been, you've been lied to for centuries. So uh, uh, don't, I suggest you not try to change that on the whole, on a worldwide scale, it'd be too dangerous for you, but just change yourself. There's only one person on the planet you're responsible for, and that's you, unless you want to pass it on to your descendants. So the next thing is, I asked uh, a question of how much does a person's soul, mind, and body, all of the previous mission parts, believe you deserve to be healthy. I find very small percentage of people who actually, whose body and mind actually believe that they deserve to be healthy. Now, those two things right there, it's going to help you change your life if you will just use it. Now, there's two other factors you can use, and there's probably more, but the two are how much do you, do you believe you deserve prosperity and how much do you believe you deserve to be loved? Those are four items right there. Suffering, how much you deserve a healthy body, how much you deserve prosperity, how much you deserve love. 
by using the example I gave you of what I, I use the term neutralize that belief system and change it to a positive belief system, you can change your life. And you can do a real good job of it. So uh, that I'm really trying to give you folks something today that you can really will help you and you can use it to help your family, help your friends. That's what it's all about. And what I'm telling you right now, I have not really recorded anywhere else. I don't think I haven't made a DVD on this. I might make one at some point. But um, I just, you just invited me to talk this morning uh, or this evening for you. And I was glad to do it and share some of this information. So go ahead, Warren. Where, where do you want to go next with this? Yeah, I love that question. Um, what you're sharing about the soul, mind, and body, because this really helped me. And especially what you were saying about your sexual organs and how that's a hundred times or 10 times more powerful than your brain. And once you clear that out, I noticed immediately I was able to improve, say, business prosperity and improve, say, connection with people when I did that. So one question um, that Michael actually asks is, which relates to this, is how do we know if we should continue a romantic relationship or not? And I only ask that because that aligns with the compatibility thing you were, you were saying in how you can even dowse or check how compatible you are with someone on your brain, your heart, and sexually and everything. Yeah. And I still use that to this day, what oh. you taught me. He asked that question, tells me that he has doubts in his mind, otherwise he wouldn't be asked. Exactly. Uh, people will tell you a lot about them when they don't know they're telling. And they tell you about because the questions I ask. Well, Michael, what I would do first is to check to see what for compatibility uh, with your partner is. And if it's below 50%, you got problems. Uh, but there is a, maybe a, a cure for that, a simple cure. And I've used this and it has worked. Now, what I find is that people's spirit guides are not quite as good as they think they are sometimes. And I learned this from an old uh, Indian woman up in Canada. He was a very good friend of mine, still is, 90 years old now. And she told me one day, she said, if you're trying to heal someone, and your spirit guides don't like their spirit guides, you probably won't be able to heal them. And I got to thinking about it that I bet this is why husbands, wives, parents and kids, employees and employers don't get along. The spirit guides don't like each other. Well, what I found was that we have the ability to remodel a person's spirit guides. Now, uh, this right here would shake up most of the dowsing societies because they believe very strongly that you cannot do anything for a, a person without their permission. Well, I don't think they thought this out very well because I ask them every time they come up with this, they say something like this to me, do you really think that I've tracked down the serial raper, child molester, thieves and all that and ask them for permission to change their behavior. The whole idea is ridiculous. No, you don't need to ask permission to think like that. You need to do it. Uh, the, there's so many I call them metaphysical societies, dowsy societies, uh, by whatever name out there, that disempower themselves by all their silly rules. And I don't follow the rules. Why? Because I don't believe in them. Uh, I believe in respect for good people. I have no reason to respect people who abuse other people. I have no reason at all to respect them. And I don't. See, one of the things about sets me apart from the world is I am what is known as politically incorrect. Uh, I have worked hard to become that way. Why? 
because political correctness is literally a curse to your life. Whenever you are afraid to say what is true, afraid you will offend somebody else. I want you to disappear. Somebody else appeared on the screen now, but I don't know who it is. Uh, so I hope I can still see you. Let's see now. Where will we going with this? Um, <laughs> Oh, are you still there? I'm still there, yeah. I'm just, just having to um, plug a charger in, Raymond. My computer was losing battery, so I'm still listening. I'm just putting a charger in my computer. Okay, well, go ahead because I understand you better when I see you. I got myself sidetracked there on something. What was, what if, oh, yeah, we started out with answering Michael's question here on this. Our next question, Michael. I uh, ask, what is the compatible of your spirit guides and your partner? You might, that's the first question would probably be ask, does she have, um, and uh, have bad spirit guides? And if so, you get rid of them the same way you would do an exorcism. But um, generally speaking, that's not the case. What usually happens is the person's Spirit guides are incompatible with each other, your being incompatible with your partner. In which case, I remove the emotions of the beliefs, thoughts, memories, and conditions of any uh, incompatible spirit guides and take all that energy, because every one of those things I just mentioned is a form of energy, and transform it into peace, love, and compatibility. And it does a lot of good. Now, look, this is not just for boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives, whatever. This is for the people you work with, associate with, do business with. It is amazing how well it can work. Okay. Um, then you can check the compatibility on uh, different levels. You can check uh, what is your financial compatibility, spiritual, social, sexual, financial, uh, because all, if, if you got a problem with any of these, you're probably not going to have that good a relationship. So that's the best way that I know to uh, find out if people are compatible. Uh, the sad part is they don't ever ask these questions ahead of time. Uh, in the newsletter that will be out here in a few days, uh, last month I wrote about an honest person. A honest situation that impressed me. So I just wrote a, a, a newsletter about it. This uh, time I wrote one about crooks uh, because uh, I kept getting these stories of people getting badly ripped off by people, especially by people claiming to be dealers that charges them thousands of dollars up front with no guarantees or anything. Uh, and I had somebody in place that had been ripped off like that. And I'm thinking, okay, I usually speak out on whatever I think needs to be said. So I said, folks, learn to dial and dial anybody that wants your money. Always dial to check their integrity. Now, I've had literally had people at Dowsing Society tell me that you're invading the person's privacy. Well, I got a very invade in your pocketbook so, uh, and your bank account. So I don't worry about things like that. Uh, before I deal with anybody, I check their integrity. And not only that, be more specific. What is their integrity toward you? They may be honest with other people, but not be honest toward you. So be very specific in the questions you're going to ask. Um, and usually, if something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Learn to trust your gut feeling, your instincts. But beyond that, you should. And uh, it would just save you so many problems. What has happened this week is someone hired a contractor to do work for them, gave them all the money up front. And then the person doesn't show up and do the work and get their money. And now they want me to get their money back. They weren't smart enough to ask me to check out the person's integrity before they paid them. I've noticed the humans are like that. 
They don't ever ask you up front about something. They wait until they've been taken advantage of, and then they want you to get them a refund. Well, it probably ain't going to happen. So uh, you life is life is better if you get smarter and use logical things. Uh, you will have far fewer problems using logic than anything else. Uh, so um, I don't. There's not a whole lot more to say on that. I hope I help Michael out there with the right questions, and, yes. and you can decide uh, if it can be corrected, and if not, you might want to part ways. So, okay, Warren, what's the next one here? Um. Another question, but before I ask this, just for my own remembrance, Raymond, how much more powerful do you say the heart was than the brain and then the sexual organ than the heart? It was like 10 times or something, wasn't it? Okay, I'm going to quote Greg Braden, who in my opinion is a very intelligent man. I only met Greg once, but I was impressed with him, and I'm a hard man to impress. Uh, but he seemed to have a lot of knowledge. And he made a statement that the heart is 5,000 times more powerful than the brain. Now, I couldn't argue that uh, at all, but him being a very intelligent person, he, uh, he's probably right. But in my opinion, I didn't have any scientific way to test this, sexual organs are more powerful than the heart because it's the only thing that keeps the population on the planet. Without them working the way they do, the human race would become extinct. And the same thing is true for animals. It's the way humans and animals are made, and to a certain extent, uh, you have male and female plants in some species. Uh, this is just nature. Now, you might ask, what is nature? Well, I will give you my definition. You don't have to agree with me. But to me, nature is a form of what religious people call God. And it's something that I see. I, I, I always was told and believed that nature was perfect. I no longer believe that. And the reason why, and there may be something here that I don't know, but several years ago, this goes back 35 years ago, I, def I remember the uh, specific date, the 11th of February, uh, we had an ice storm, and it was beautiful. Every twig on every tree limb had about uh, almost an inch of ice around it. Well, all that ice was weight water. Ice is simply frozen water, and water had weight. Uh, in the American standard of measurement, it weighs uh, one uh, pound to every pint of water. That would be two pounds to every liter of water if you're using me uh, metric. So when every uh, branch on a tree, every twig, is covered with ice, it weighs a lot. So what happened? It broke the limbs out of the trees. I could step outside and it sounded like a war going on out here on the mountain. Of the tree limbs that were falling out of the trees. So when the storm was over, a few days later, I walked out through the mountains and I saw limbs ripped off of trees. Big limbs. And I looked at it and I thought, you know, I could have done a better job with the chainsaw. That was the day I stopped believing that nature was perfect. So I believe what I see, not what I've heard. Now, but does nature have intelligence? Yes. And maybe I misunderstood the situation. But to me, I didn't see any problem solved that day by ripping limbs off of trees. I see some trees that grow straight. I see some that go twisted and crooked. Can I believe they're equal? No. Any more than I believe that humans are equal. There's some very good people on this planet. Kind, benevolent, fine, fine people to be friends with. 
There's also low life on this planet that will steal everything you've got, torture your animals, molest your kids. I have no reason at all to believe human equality exists, and I have many reasons to believe that it doesn't. And that is probably the most incorrect, uh, what is called incorrect political statement anyone could make. And I make it at least three times in every class because I want people to get it through their head. You've been lied to. So uh, how, how long are we going now? We've gone almost an hour, so I don't know what the schedule is this morning. And uh, I really try to put out some decent information, whether anybody believes it or not. I don't know, but I told you what I saw. One, one, so, one, yeah. one what, question. What else then? can we do here? You can ask them. Yes, I've got a question from Karis. She says, and this is a good one because you've um, – previously taught me this what do you do to clear emfs like you know mobile phone emissions emfs electricity box meter um 5g like this stuff you can do around that in the schumann resonance which is what she's asking about the emfs an answer that i believe is true i try to be as honest as i can with people uh uh if you will write me, now what's this lady's name, please? Karis. All right, Karis. Uh, you write me. My address is Raymond, R-A-Y-M-O-N. Don't put a D on it. Let's start all over. Raymond at RaymondGrace.us. Uh, and say, send me your problem package video. Or you might just look it up and find I created a video that is not complete uh, because I didn't think of everything at the time. I created the video for the uh, a conference for Ozark Research Institute about last uh, October, about almost a year ago. And I realized that there were certain things that affected the majority of people on the planet, especially if they live in cities around other people. So I made a list of things. At the time, I put seven things on the list that I was pretty sure affected the majority of people. 5G was one of them. Radiation was one. Uh, the uh, Contagious energy of people was one. I didn't call it contagious energy, but I called it the energy of the surrounding area. All right, there were some things I did not think to put on that list. I had seven. I have since added uh, TV news, social media, government, and religion. So whenever you use that, now all you've got to do is watch the video. It's about 15 minutes long. And I explain all these things. And then I say, okay, all you have to do every morning is say, I want to neutralize Raymond's problem package upon me, upon my family, upon my home. That's really, I, I made it as simple as I possibly could to help as many people as would have sense enough to use. So uh, you feel free to use that, but if you don't pick it up online, you send me an email and I will be glad to send, not I will send you that, but I'll send you some more too. Uh, uh, that's anybody out there listening, folks. Uh, I've got a free video pack that I will be glad to give to you. Now it may take a, uh, we get a lot of mail, it takes me a little bit of time, but all I got to do is kind of, Click on a, um, oh, I've got this thing set up where I can just transfer it over and, and send it on to you so that way I don't, don't have to spend a lot of time on it. But um, just remember to add the four things I just told you into that problem package. That's social media, TV news, government, and religion. And if you think of something else to put in there, you go ahead and do that. There's not any reason you should, and you probably will. So, uh, uh, but let me give you a story on this. I have reason to believe 
But the human mind can neutralize most any type of negative thing that affects it. And I've told this story a lot of times. Maybe our audience today hasn't heard it. Several years back, my friend Bill Northern was the president of the American Society of Doubters, and he was doing a dowsing place at his house. So he takes us all out there with our dowsing rods and says, find a noxious energy zone. Well, we found it. Everybody was pretty much agreement where it was. He says, show me what causes it. Well, we didn't know. And he pointed to a transformer on a electric power pole across the road. He said, uh, transformer causes it. It sends out energy enough to where you picked it up right here. So I was like, okay, let's see what we can do. So about an hour later, I go to him and I said, Bill, uh, let's get to place and go out here and find that noxious energy zone again. He said, we've already found it. I said, yeah, I know. Let's do it again. Well, he said, there's no reason to. I said, well, just humor me. Please, come on out here and let's find it. He said, well, you need to take some place out there and find it. So I said, okay, folks, let's come on out here. I want you to find that uh, noxious energy zone again. Nobody could find it. So he showed up. He said, I'll show you where it is. He couldn't find it either. He looked at me and said, what did you do with it? I neutralized the negative effect of the transformer. After that, I figured, okay, we can do about anything. You see, folks, we did, uh, when was this, a month or so ago, that we uh, cleaned up that lake where Perth, Australia gets its water. Twenty-seven of you folks wrote and thanked me for giving you good water. I was very glad to do it. So whenever we get results like this, there's no reason to doubt doing something like neutralizing 5G. Um, we are limited by our belief system. And you have a belief system that, that is damaging to you. You are right. I have a belief system that won't bother me. If people had a strong belief system, you wouldn't have all the lockdowns now and all the fear of the, of the virus. But the virus is advertised. There has never been anything on TV that has been advertised and promoted more than a virus and a vaccine. Think, people. Don't bother to write and ask me questions. Just think. It is glaringly obvious. But millions of people seem to miss it. So uh, I like to talk to smarter people than that. So um, that's about all I've got to say on the 5G or anything else. But uh, by all means, get, uh, get that problem package. Study it. Understand it. Add the four things to it I told you about, whatever else you can think of, and use it every morning. See, <clears throat> Warren, as you well know, and other folks may or may not, but the energy of our Earth is changing tremendously. It's increasing right now. The people on my energy clearing list, which I do for them every morning, uh, their energy, I, I'm not going to tell you how high it is. It's not even believable. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that I have improved the mechanics of their vehicle or that everything in their life is going to go perfect. It doesn't mean that at all. It means that we are eliminating the things that hold your energy down. Uh, and we're having really good results. We're giving everybody on the list, as far as I know, we're giving them good tasting water that they've never had before, which I'm very glad to do. We started out uh, agreeing to do this one day a month for $25. And I thought, well, we can do better than that. So I will do this for them every week. I always like to give people more than what they're paying for. It's my way of doing business. And then the virus came out. And I said, okay, they need help. So I will think, well, we better do this twice a week. Then what a week. We're now doing it. Every, and have been now for a year or longer. But I agreed to do once a month. I'm now doing at least once a day, but usually twice a day. 
So I'm doing at least 50 times as much what I agreed to do without charging anybody any more money. And it's just, uh, to me, it's just a fair way to do business. And uh, maybe a little more than fair, but that's, that's okay. Anybody that would be interested in this, just go to my website, Raymond, Raymond, no, excuse me, RaymondGraceFoundation.org, and there's a place there to sign up. Also, if you don't get my newsletter, if you'll sign up today or tomorrow, today, I guess, or morning where you are, uh, it will go out, I don't know what day, it may go out tomorrow, it may go the next day, I'm not sure. But if you go ahead and sign up on it today, well, you can get the free newsletter if you if you like it. And if you don't like it, you don't have to take it. And it doesn't cost you anything. So um, what uh, what else do we need? Do we have any other questions, sir, for people? Yeah, I've got a question here from Menu. Ha- any advice on how to protect one's energy from others, i.e. not get, like, train-wrecked or messed around by other people's really horrible negative energy? Well, the phrase I use is to neutralize the negative effect of anyone else upon me or upon whoever I'm working with. Because sometimes people will contact me and they had a meeting with someone that day that just really scattered their energy something off. Well, all I do is neutralize the negative effect of that other bending person on them and their energy will come back. But if you have an attitude strong enough that nobody else can bother you, they probably won't affect you. Now, the first rule is don't hang around people that drag your energy down if you can possibly avoid it. It may be somebody you work with. If that is the case, check to see if they're possessed. If so, do an exorcism model. I got videos, a video that'll show you how. It's called Change Energy, Change Your Life. So, um, do, um, do whatever you can to help them out. Maybe they've just got bad spirit guys. We'll take them away from them. Maybe they got disagreeable spirit guys. Change that. Uh, just some of the things we said in the very beginning of this talk right here. Try, try that first. And then another thing, since energy follows thought, we are learning that people will react to what we expect of them. And children will do that. If you expect your children to misbehave, they likely will. If you will try this one simple thing, that is after you've corrected the, the, the major problems, imagine people being kind. Imagine being more cheerful. Imagine you being friendly to you. If you see your thoughts have so much power, and if you think they're going to mistreat you, be grouchy or whatever, you're really contributing to the problem. So the first step in changing anything is to change the way you think about it. Okay, we got anybody else? Let me have a look. Um, I think that's actually all people have asked. Um, but mind, this has been. Anyone else got any questions of Raymond um, while he's still while he's here? People are loving it, Raymond. Um, one guy asks about um, how does Raymond define the soul? You shouldn't ask people like me questions like that. I don't have an answer. I just have to say I don't. No offense intended. But if you ask me philosophy questions, I probably don't have an answer for you. Yeah. Nothing wrong with your question. I just don't. I just don't know, and it wouldn't really matter what I said. You still wouldn't know whether to believe me or not. So uh, I, I got to pass on that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay. So one other question is that I think you've already answered this, but someone's asked about um, – Stopping spiritual attacks, which are causing emotional and physical problems, I would just be 
answering about dowsing, is that right? And just checking if they're possessed or what? Well, part of the time there are, did, did you say physical attacks? Spiritual attacks causing emotional and physical problems. Okay. Um, that may or may not be true. I'm running to too many people asking that question when I cannot find that they're being attacked, but they believe they are. Now, I'm not saying that's true in the case of this person right here. They may have a very legitimate reason to believe this. Someone, uh, people do, but purchase on other people. Uh, I find them. I just don't find a lot of them. Uh, in which case, when I find curses on people, I simply break the curses. And if you say, how do you do that? I have one word that I will answer most questions like that with, and the word is intent. I do it with intent because I can. And why? how can I do it? Why do I believe this? Because I've done it in the past. Once I have success with something, I always say, okay, we won that one. What can we do next? So do I have the ability to break curses on people? Yes. I've broken curses on the land. Um, and I, I do it simply with intent. That's the only way I know how to answer that question. So um, I, a lot of times, though, when people ask a question like this, I will ask to what degree do they believe they have been cursed? And sometimes they have strong beliefs, uh, but it, it's really not true. But they will still attract to themselves the same problems as if it were true, simply because they believe it. So it's so important to examine your own belief system. And how much are you believing that really not to your advantage? So, um, uh, if there are curses on this person, um, I don't really hardly know how to tell you I break them except I just do it with intent. And I've had really good success with it. And I would like to tell that person they can do the same thing. I don't know that. It depends on, uh, they may have problems because they already believe that, that they're stuck with it. But, um, if your mind is strong enough, yes, you can do it. What makes the difference in my mind and most people? I've spent 48 years practicing with it. I practice doubting every day. I practice clearing energy every day. I, there may be somebody somewhat does more than I do, but I don't know who it is. And in the winter, I do even more than I do in the summer. Why? Because there's more time. In the summer, I've got farm work to do and gardens and all this. I mean, I physically work outside a lot. Uh, but in the winter, uh, if I'm inside more, I, I, sometimes I would spend 12 hours a day doing nothing more than either dialing or energy work or working on plants. So you get a lot of practice like that. So anything that you're going to get really good at, you've got to practice. Every star athlete, now that somebody did some research on this, every star athlete has spent at least 10,000 hours in practice. That's how they got good at it. Well, I do this stuff every day, many hours a day. So you, you get a lot of practice. I work with people that have a various uh, variety of problems. So again, that's more practice. If you buy a pendulum and an instruction book, and take it home and put it in the dresser drawer, it's not going to do you much good. You're not going to learn anything. You learn but doing. So the best thing I know to tell you folks to do is just practice. And don't worry if you don't succeed every time, because I haven't. But I don't worry about the times I didn't succeed. I just think, well, every time I won, I learn something else. I learn what works. So uh, it builds confidence. Whenever you can start changing situations with your mind, that's going to build your confidence. And the more confidence you have, the more success you will have. And the more success you have, the more confidence you will have. They build upon each other. So we've got, uh, well, we're 
getting close to an hour and a half here on this. I don't know how long it was supposed to last. I don't think we had an agreement on that. But I may have given the people about all they can handle. So, yeah. And I don't know what time it is where you are either. Probably getting, probably getting late. Um, it is. But thank you so much for your, um, for your time, Raymond. And I'm getting... I'm getting so many comments, people loving it. So, yeah. Um, well, that's good. And I, I thank you for putting together this opportunity, both for them and for me. Uh, and we'll do it again at some point. You just kind of need to give me an idea of what needs to be said. Now, if you've got a different group every time, we could probably say pretty much the same thing because they hadn't heard it. But if we've got the same people every time, we want to give them something different if we can. And I really like to get their questions because that tells me what they want to know. Uh, and that that's the best way I know to be of service to people is give them what they need to know. Yeah, look, thank you so much, Raymond. So well, I want to thank all you folks for listening. If you do write me about uh, that video, I will get uh get it out to you i won't have time to write you a long email but i'll uh i will be glad to get it out to you we're working to spread the word and uh, i want to congratulate uh you warren on what you and all your people have done for Perth. and i'm always glad to, uh to help you out i did some dowsing on this mine and your dowsing seem to be in agreement i think you folks have done a miracle and i think you're an example to the to the world and i just wanted to congratulate you thank you thank you no i appreciate that it's um it's been extraordinary with perth how we've been able to just do everything you've taught us raymond that's what i've been doing and um yeah a number of times there's been potential lockdowns and we go right through the checklist and when we clear it there's usually things out and as soon as the things are cleared miraculously the problem goes away so it certainly works They really need to make you an honorary citizen there. Uh, <laughs> for what for the city. <laughs> they, they need to have an appreciate warm flag day. Oh, thank you. It's very kind. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to head out now. So you folks have a good sleep well, wake up happy in the morning. All right. Good night. Okay. Thank you. See you. Okay, well, who who enjoyed that immensely? I'm sure. I I I, I hear that same stuff every time, and I never get bored. I learn something new every single time. I have to say. Yeah, he was fantastic, wasn't he? Ah, oh, yeah. It's just. Yeah. yeah. Well, don't you, I bet you love it, William. Very empowered, isn't he? Yes, I do. I do love it. I mean, he's he, he certainly takes no prisoners, does he? No. Well, I do want to tell everyone that what he was sharing there, I've been to two of his workshops in physically, three-day workshops. I've been to two of his um, live 10-hour webinars that he ran, and... Um, I've been practicing this stuff for about seven, seven or eight, seven odd years or so. And everything he was saying is absolutely spot on. Like compatibility of spirit guys with someone. Like I find when we did this for Western Australia, for example, with Perth, I, in the beginning last year, when we were really having some problems over here, I started working on the compatibility of the spirit guides of our politicians. And I found they were right out, like they were not surprisingly with the higher councils. So I just did what he said and dispossessed his spirit guides and put some new ones in. And straight away, it, I noticed a change. And what's what's very, very, what's very interesting is he mentioned about Jeff Jones. I met Jeff Jones. Jeff Jones, 25 years ago, turned up at Raymond's class and Jeff had never really liked eating all that much. So he just said to Raymond, well, if I can do anything I believe, then surely I don't have to eat anymore if I don't want to. And Raymond said, well, you can give it a shot. So Jeff did a dowsing that every time he'd drink a glass of water, that that would give him all of his nutrients that he would need. 
And 25 years later, Jeff still hasn't eaten. So, and I can remember when I was at his workshop, there was a girl I was dating who'd experienced um, sexual abuse and trauma and her sexual organs are very blocked up. So she found it hard to open in that area. And so what I did was I waited till she was asleep, which is what Raymond suggested, um, and I went ahead and actually cleared all the trauma and went back in time and did some stuff and woke up the and next day when I spoke to her, she goes, I don't know why, but I feel different and I really feel like I'd like to get a hug, which she'd never said to me before. And she was different after I saw her. And he was doing things where teaching us how to actually like Dow's food. And William would remember that, how we were experimenting and we were going into fast food restaurants with horrible looking burgers, dousing them and turning them into sourdough, gluten-free, and we tasted them and they actually felt like it and tasted like that. So, um, yeah, everything. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, you remember that, don't you? You guys were doing that all the time. Well, I think my favourite was when we all wanted uh, some really nice ice cream and then you were hesitant and then we were like, remember the dowsing? And you're like, oh, okay. So then we tried it and it tasted like healthy ice cream. Oh, that was so much fun. You remember the four of us, uh, we all went travelling around um, America, Well, like we were in Virginia and we were going around to all these places and dowsing all these weird foods. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. It was pretty oh, I, I just wonder how many people thought we were crazy people. Well, we are crazy, <laughs> but I like I like what he said. So I wanted to write notes today and, I'll, and um, I love what he said about integrity because I do that. And I also do compatibility with someone as well, and it's so true. I can generally, you can even tell, for example, using dowsing and tuning in what he's saying about the level of sexual flow with someone. Like you can have a tremendous, I mean, I and, and until I learned this, it used to bewilder me. But like, for example, you can have tremendous emotional and mental connection with the opposite, with someone the opposite sex, and yet the sexual connection might be totally blocked. And I think many connections and relationships actually experience that um or, or likewise you can have a tremendous sexual compatibility but not compatible in others so if you know that stuff um yeah holly i need to learn this dowsing yeah no the dowsing holly is great um i did a course on this five years ago i remember the last time i did it and we had business people blown away like one guy who i was teaching one guy in the course I doused his staff and told him he had a dishonest person in his staff, one of his seven main staff. He goes, that's not possible. He goes, I know these guys personally. And I said, well, my dowsing's telling me that one of your staff member is dishonest. And he said, okay. The next day he rings he, he rings me. I, I got a missed call from him and I ring him. He goes, you're not going to believe this because I'm in shock. He said, I just found that one of my staff has been secretly behind my back in the last two weeks been planning to leave and taking a whole lot of my clients and, um, you know, and things like that. So um, Vic says about not tapping into another person's spirit guide without their approval. Well, as Raymond said, the Dowsing Association believe that, and he and I think it's absolute nonsense. So don't believe it for one little minute <laughs> myself. So I think it's a very limiting belief. How do you learn dowsing? You do a course or start practicing. So um, it's something that I've got a few different courses going on at the moment, but if enough people were interested, I might look at doing one around November or December because that would be a good time to do it once we've got our events out of the way and our big, all our other courses. If people are really interested, I might um, look at doing a decent course in dowsing. In fact, what I was actually thinking of doing was doing a really super duper one that would be dowsing, um, remote viewing, and I Ching. So really like fine tuning energy reading, um, reading the future, um, getting future timelines and things like that. But yeah, so all this stuff here that Raymond actually gives, um, yeah, I'm just just going back over this. I can tell you now is really powerful. So let me just see what else he said. Yeah, these questions on this three-day event, just so you know, um, we went through a, a 70 and a 78 um, point checklist. And we actually checked on health, prosperity, everything. Like, for example, and we would, and I remember when I checked at the time, because I was having some business challenges 
I remember my mind and my and my heart had 100% belief in prosperity. I deserved to be prosperous, but my sexual organs was actually a lot lower. And that shocked me. And as soon as we did a dowsing and we cleared the sexual organs um, for me, and I got that cleaned up, straight away, I, was, I noticed the prosperity improved. And this is what Raymond was saying. And just in case that those of the females here didn't catch that, two significant things he said about females. One, he said that on 28th of May, he did a specific clearing to empower females. And since that time, a number of females I've spoken to who said they've noticed the difference. The other thing he also said is many females have difficulties of prosperity because they're very blocked up in their sexual organs. That's one reason um, and things like that. So my guess is if we did a dowsing on most of the females here, you probably would be very shocked on your sexual organs on where they're at with prosperity and with self-worth and with loving yourself. So because many women, as he said, were tortured in the dark ages in their past lives. So, yeah, that was the thing he mentioned here. And I love what he said about suffering because I agree with him. Um, I personally have no desire whatsoever to go through any suffering I don't need to, um, and I have no desire to suffer. I think suffering's annoying. I don't like having pain in my body if I can avoid it, and I don't like having financial challenges. I like having lots of money. I like having a really healthy body, and right now I have that. I believe I deserve a healthy body. And I believe that I deserve to be absolutely prosperous and I believe I deserve the best. And I believe that if people are in my life, I deserve to be treated like a king. And if people don't treat me like that, then I don't have them in my life. So, yeah, look, all this stuff here he's teaching is so darn good. And, um, yeah, so the last thing there, so much he said here, we could go on about it. But, yeah, changing the talk. If anyone wants to, what I might even do is I might put these notes together and I might, um, you know, put them up somewhere as well, just what I've um, summarised as well somewhere, just so people can get a copy of his notes. And, yeah, we'll definitely do a dowsing and some kind of course later on next month or whatever else. So, but it's a wonderful journey. I mean, the greatest thing I, you know, this is one of the best skills I ever learned with Raymond that changed my life. That's why I always like getting him in fact. So, okay, everyone, well, have a magnificent night. And I'll see you all um, at the next um, webinar thingo. Okay, see you, everyone.